My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. Welcome to this uh, podcast of Digital Oil and Gas. My name is Jeffrey Cannon. I'm joined today by a great friend of mine, Nav Dune, who is a, a tech entrepreneur here in Calgary. And the conversation today will be all about ecosystems and what they are. Nav, welcome. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Looking forward to the discussion. <laughs> yeah, so first, uh, so my uh, the audience might not know who you are and your background. So let's start with that. Like, wh- what do you do, and um, and, and what's your uh, what's your story? Sure. I guess from a a cliche perspective, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, I've started tech companies here in Calgary, um, four in the past and and, uh, working on my fifth one. And what I've uh, learned over the last little bit is Calgary is a fantastic place to start up companies. Mm. Uh, there's some challenges in, in terms of starting, start, starting up a high tech company here in Calgary where we're heavily industrial focused, mm. uh, but certainly a great place to start up companies. And I've, I've had a fantastic run of it myself. Yeah, and what, and what you do, can you share what your current venture is and what you're currently up to? Currently, I'm with, working with Imaginea AI, which is the it's a bold vision of decentralized and creating a, a commoditized artificial artificial intelligence, smart market. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of buzzwords in that <laughs> itself. But the premise of it is is putting artificial intelligence in the hands of everyone. So mm. it's, it's no longer in the hands of the big energy giants or the large companies that can afford artificial intelligence. But the mom and pop coffee shop down the street can now get access to great artificial intelligence technology, use it to optimize their business without having that big financial hit up front. So if I'm imagining a, um, uh, an artificial intelligence service in the cloud, say, and I might say feed up my... Some of my operating data that I'm curious about, mm-hmm. and and uh, the, the, these engines will process that and come back with some insights. Is that the idea? Yeah, absolutely. And the premise of it is to do something similar to WordPress. And if you're familiar with oh, WordPress, yeah, really, yep. you know, it's you the foundation of the internet. Absolutely, <laughs> all, all the websites we uh, interact with out there are largely on WordPress uh, uh, sites. Yeah, and, and you can go to WordPress today. Mm-hmm. Pick out a theme for a, a website you like. Mm-hmm. Pick out a template. Pick out a catalog style that you'd like. Choose mm-hmm. your shopping cart, choose the payment gateway, choose Stripe if you need to, and hit go. And within 10 minutes, you have an e-commerce site up, up ready to running. go up and running. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I see that in 5 to 10 years, that's where artificial intelligence will be, where we will have the ability to pick a system and then from there, choose the type of AI help that you need, whether it's mm-hmm. an RPA, whether it's a natural language processing, conversational AI, drag and drop those models around, and then have uh, define some input and have some output come out of it. And I'm gathering the ecosystem uh, of, of uh, services come because when you're just using the, that illustration of WordPress, uh, payment systems, um, e-commerce uh, capabilities, software ready mm-hmm. to go, there, there's an ecosystem that uh, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs have built over the years to deliver that. So it were, you know, so so similarly, ecosystem for AI, if you like, uh, fits into the similar needs to follow a similar path. I'm guessing. Absolutely, and if yeah. you look at kind of the definition of ecosystem, it's really mm-hmm. all of these interconnected pieces that kind of feed each other, and they're all required for the entire ecosystem to survive. And mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about with artificial intelligence is putting together data scientists, putting together data, data labelers, uh, models and algorithms in a marketplace where they can actually coexist and, yeah. and flourish. And so what's inside, I mean, think about an ecosystem. Uh, you know, if I go to a, uh, an example might be in the Amazonian rainforest, right? I have, I've got certain plants, I've got insects, I've got rain conditions, I've got animal behaviors, I've got, you know, the uh, droppings from animals are fertilizer for mm-hmm. the plants to grow, which generate the fruit. That the, so you have this this uh, ecosystem of, of, of uh, participants. Uh, I, the uh, ecosystem for tech companies must have some similar characteristics in, in, in that regard, I'm guessing. Yeah, they do. And, and I'll kind of reference the, the tech ecosystem that I've, I've seen in Silicon Valley and, 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 you know, try to explain to you how it relates to what's happening Mm. in Calgary. In in Silicon Valley, the companies that are there aren't there because the market is there. They are there because the community is there to help them grow and foster. So they're building products and services for the global market. So where they, where they are or where they're stationed, their head office is irrelevant Mm. or is irrelevant. Um, So what, so what do they need? If you're, if I'm a tech startup in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. 
what do I need in my ecosystem so that I can yeah. be successful? Well, you, you certainly need access to talented, uh, like-minded individuals. Um, so that's certainly something you're going to find in Silicon Valley. Yep. You also need access to the academia to be able to provide some feed stock for some of that talent. Uh, to, like to good, good universities. Good universities, good colleges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you also need good investments. Uh, you need VCs and, and angel investors that understand technology, and are willing to take the risks with with technology projects, mm. and so you need that entire ecosystem to feed itself, be able in order for us to be able to create, um, you know, high powered, high performing tech companies. Mm. But I'm, I'm not, most industrial cities like Calgary has an ecosystem already. It's just geared yeah. towards or you know towards oil and gas. Yeah, we've done a fantastic job of building an ecosystem around the energy space. You know, from our universities being able to churn yep. out Geologists, fantastic engineers, engineers. Yep. absolutely yep. into mm. being able to create those jobs, and even having additional uh, education beyond after they get onto onto the job itself. So on the job training programs that we've got in place, that entire ecosystem is is fantastic, and we've got great investors that are invest into the energy sector. Maybe not right now, but mm. certainly uh, <laughs> in the past we've had yep. investors. In investing heavily into the energy sector. So that ecosystem exists fairly well. And, you know, we've got like-minded individuals all very much focused on, on continuing to enhance that industrial space. What we haven't done is, is um, in the past, is focused on creating a tech ecosystem where tech companies can thrive in Calgary. But, but oil and gas is very technical. Mm -hmm. So is that accurate? Like, yeah, uh, it, it, where, where, where's the shortfall? Where, like, as a tech entrepreneur, you're, where, do, where do you see... You know, where, where the opportunity for new tech skills yeah. in a city that I, I, if you're an oil and gas guy, as I am, you'd argue the city's already pretty technical. So yeah. what, what, is, what is it that you see as the mm -hmm. opening here for, for fresh, uh, fresh ways to think about the, the industry and business? You know, I certainly think that the energy industry and oil and gas is, is heavy in tech, but it's a mm. different type of tech. Uh, ah. As we start to look at high tech and, and what I consider high tech is this moving window that's on the edge of technology. And, and today, right now, in that window of high tech is things like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, um, 3D printing, uh, that type of yeah, technology these, these, is this window. Yeah, and they're not, these technologies are still really novel to oil and gas. That's right. right? They're but, very novel. So, But the industry is still pretty strong in things like um, big data and uh, complex data processing and visualization and so forth, the sub, whole subsurface interpretation world is a yeah. is a it should have to, would have to be a playground for smart data scientists and so forth but uh, is that really is that true or is hmm. am i am i missing something no and in fact that's some of the, the benefits and uh, that we've got uh, that we can make available for tech companies here in calgary mm. is we have a wealth of data in the industrial side yes true, that we yeah. can certainly figure out some complex problems from we also have some very very talented engineers that have mm. been looking at this data for a long time and so we've got what i call data wranglers uh, not necessarily data scientists, but more data wranglers that understand, have deep domain knowledge on data science. <laughs> so in a, in a cowboy city, a data wrangler. <laughs> I'm imagining some some guy on horseback with that uh, the top is a, is a 10 gallon hat and a yeah. lasso, and he's 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 chasing data sets around the company, trying to pull them into a into the corral. Is yeah. that the right idea? Well, that's exactly what's been happening, right? Is mm -hmm. is we have all of this great data from industrial equipment out in the field, yes. uh, whether some yeah. of it's internal or external. And then what we've been spending our time is trying to wrangle all this data together into into historians in the past. And now we're starting to look at data lakes uh, so we can actually start doing the analysis. So we're really good at that. We're really mm. good at handling mass amounts of data. Uh, we've been doing that for years. Um, and so now what I'm suggesting is that that on the data wrangling side, we've been fantastic. We mm. need to build a core uh, um, competency around data science, which is starting to dig deep into that data itself and understanding what it means. And that's where I think the opportunity lies for Calgary. Mm. And, and are there openings for uh, those? I mean, in your, in, as you work with uh, organizations across the city landscape, are you seeing openings for those kinds of roles here? Absolutely. And, and I would say that the, the openings... Uh, considerably outweigh the actual um, number of individuals that are available to take those positions. We have a mm. shortage of data scientists, not only in Calgary, in Canada, and even North America and globally. Um, and so we need to look at how do we bring data scientists to Calgary? Mm. Uh, we've got great problems to solve here. And it's mm. not saying that, you know, that, that it's in a bad way, but they're great challenging problems in the energy industry. And we need to have some bright minds to do it. And we've got everything necessary to bring these data scientists here and keep them working here. So I'm a big fan of looking outside of our, our backyard and saying, hey, can we actually recruit data scientists from other parts of the world? Mm. 
Other, what other skill sets are you seeing uh, in, in, you know, that, that you, you are anticipating the, the ecosystem needs to be able to furnish uh, for us? You mentioned a couple of other technologies, blockchain being one, 3D yeah. printing being another. Are there other technology areas that are you see starting to blossom where there's real uh, real opportunity? Well, we're really seeing a blossom of, of, of technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality here mm. in Calgary in the energy space. You know, there's some great companies doing some fantastic work on being able to model facilities in a virtual space where you can walk through the facility yeah. and see what decisions were yeah, wrong. Yeah, and oil and gas infrastructure is not unique in that regard, but very often the facilities are so massive, you can't really get mm. your head around them um, easily. and uh, so to vi- vir- visualize them, if you like, virtually through lens, you know, through a cloud or through a, a virtual reality headset um, actually is a big plus. So there should be demand for that sort of thing. There is a demand. And, and those skills are, are fairly transferable. If you look at virtual reality and being able to you know, visualize a large facility, mm. you could take that skill of, of understanding how to build virtual reality models and taking that into other, other industries. Like a, a, a real close tangent is into real estate, uh, building mm, office towers. Office stars up, yeah. you know, a building or transit even, systems. Yeah, yeah, or even taking it to the stuff. consumer and saying, hey, how would you like to visualize your house before it's built to make sure that this house you want? Mm. Um, so there's lots of tangents when it comes to VR and even AR. Uh, and so when we talk about having all this wealth of data, this is phenomenal because it's a playground zone for people that are techies. Mm. You know, you're going to get here and you're going to have this big smile on your face because all of this data, all this un- data, untapped, data, untapped really. data. And you yeah. start to dive into some of this high technology really quickly. So if I'm a small oil and gas company, as an example, uh, I might say, I, mean, I look at my resource mix at the moment and my ability to, to stand up new, new teams and projects, and I might, I might conclude that this is beyond my reach. Is that, is that accurate? Is that a fair uh, portrayal of, of this, this, uh, this whole wave of digital? I think that the, uh, the challenge we have within the energy space, to be frank with you, is that we need to have more technology people uh, at the, the C-suite level with these mm. companies that can start to understand how technology can impact them and how it can benefit the organization. Most uh, technology company or energy companies, sorry, do not have a CTO as an example. At a, um, at a level, say, uh, same same peer level as chief operating officer or VP of exploration, right. what have you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. And so if we had that, what you'd find is that we'd start to look at technology differently. Mm. Uh, we would not just look at it as an enabler of, of things, but we would look at it as a real change agent. Uh, to changing how how we operate, how our business models work. Mm. Um, And we don't have that today. There are certain companies that I've seen that are starting to lean towards having a technology, senior technology person at the board level and that can help provide some oversight. But it's it's wrong for us to assume that every uh, energy company is a tech company and will become a tech company. Mm. That's not their expertise. Yeah, they're, they're oil and gas companies, as an example, are in the business of producing molecules for people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Know, resource yeah. extraction industry. And if, I, if I'm imagining, if I'm down in Silicon Valley and I'm thinking about the ecosystem down there and, I, and I'm a company and I'm looking for a, a, a chief technology officer, for example, could I turn to the ecosystem as a, um, a backstop or maybe a place to source that kind of know-how? And if that's the case, then it, the ecosystem is also a place to find people, talent, and resources to solve certain kind of role challenges that you might find. Is that, yeah. is that how Silicon Valley would view this? Absolutely. And even potentially a place to incubate ideas. Mm. Now, mind, mind you, we do have a, a, a good depth of, of tech talent here on the energy side of things. But, you know, there's no reason why we can't tap into some of the resources that are in Silicon Valley or in other parts of Canada as well and start to use them to incubate ideas. I think that the challenge that we have in the energy space right now around uh, ideation is that we've we've typically been fairly risk adverse when it comes to throwing out new ideas and testing them and understanding that we're probably going to fail on 99% of them um, and then mm. looking for that 1%. That hasn't been in our DNA in the past. Yeah. And well, I think oil, we need to oil, shift that. Well, and so that's a fair challenge, actually. Oil and gas infrastructure is not, I wouldn't say it's unique in this regard, but um, the way you think about oil and gas is typically at scale. And uh, you also uh, typically view oil and gas infrastructure as permanent. Yeah. And uh, digital is actually not yet at scale. When you start trialing something in the digital world, innovation world, usually trying it really small so that mm-hmm. if, it, if it doesn't work, you can abandon it at low risk. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> little regret capital. Oil and gas doesn't have that as a standard mindset. Right. The mindset's actually, I have to make it perfect out of the gate. Yeah. It's going to be big to, to make the payoff. 
And uh, so we're kind of at cross purposes here. I think maybe one of the roles of the ecosystem is to help oil and gas companies think differently mm -hmm. about how to trial and innovate things that yes. break through some of these like, pattern ways of thinking about how to do things in the industry. Yeah, and I think tech companies can help with that. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, I don't think oil and gas companies necessarily need to become tech companies, but if they're partnering with tech companies that yeah. have that in their DNA, yeah. where they're all around experimentation and they operate like a, a room full of scientists then rather than a room full of engineers, you could tap into that and get type a different, of ecosystem. Different, yeah, yeah, so it really is about being part of the ecosystem. It's not so easy. You know, I've been talking about this. This isn't about a the development of a separate standalone technical ecosystem world in a Calgary. This is a, uh, a question of an ecosystem that oil and gas in, in companies should equally participate in because they can be pulling some of those good ideas back into the oil and gas world. Absolutely. I don't think it's it's a separate ecosystem by any means. Yeah. You know, I, I know that, uh, that uh, you know, within Calgary Economic Development, they've really been focusing on putting tech together with sectors. So they're talking about energy tech and clean ag, tech and ag tech and so yeah. forth. And I think that's a great mindset. I still want to uh, caution us not to get too far into that and, and limit anybody who's coming in here with just a, a tech mindset only, mm. uh, because there's no reason why we couldn't have the next Shopify built here in Calgary. There's no reason why we couldn't have the next Salesforce built here when those kinds of technologies go cross sector. Mm. So we should be open to creating that type of ecosystem as well. But at the same time, you know, we should be fostering a high tech that is collaborative with the energy industry. Any, any, so whereas we near the end of this podcast, any parting thoughts about, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you were meeting with an executive, um, say in an oil and gas company today, and, and they were asking you, what should I be doing? I hear about ecosystems. I, yeah. I'm part of one, but it's oil and gas based. What, what would your advice be to them in and around the tech uh, tech ecosystem development here in the city? You know, I think the first thing I would just tell them is, is is get outside of the shell, get outside of your box, get outside of the comfort zone. Go and attend some of these types of meetups that are happening in the high tech space. We've got some great blockchain meetups. We've got some yep, great AI meetups. Ones, yeah. We've got some product management meetings. We have VR, virtual reality meetups as well. Get into these spaces to see what's actually being done. And I've always found if you're just staying at your desk, you're going to get stupid. So get out outside of your desk. Get out there and see what's happening in the community. There's lots of great tech already in Calgary. Figure out how you plug your energy company into one into of these that, into tech that structure, ecosystems. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, so uh, tune in again next week for another episode of uh, Digital Oil and Gas. My name is Jeffrey Can. Thanks, Jeffrey. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil and Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil & Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.